My interest in real estate and investing started at the tail end of my residency and going into fellowship. I initially, my mindset was, you know, just just put in the hours, get in, get your nine to five, and life will be good. Um, but slowly, I started to realize that that is not a great setup to leave something for my my family. Hi, I'm Wyatt, and I'm Grace. And you're listening to Our Dad and your host of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Sean Moore, and we're back with our Friday interviews. These are my favorite conversations to have with other short-term rental investors willing to jump on, have a conversation, and share the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between of short-term rental investing. Today, we've got Mr. Vase Bari joining us. Vase, I appreciate you joining, my friend. Thank you for the opportunity, Sean. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Um, and I'm excited about this conversation. I told you before we hit record, you got one of my favorite properties. The outdoor experience is, is so fun to talk about. But before we dive into the property and what's going on um, with your short term rentals, I'd love to talk about the background, the backstory, you know, uh, on, you know, where are you, where are you from? You know, what does the family look like? Where are we from? What pays the bills? Like, let's start with the backstory and then lead into the investment side of life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have, uh, pretty diverse background. Uh, I was actually born in Pakistan, um, lived there for less than a year, and then we moved over to uh, Dubai. And then from there, we, my dad decided, let's come to the other side of the world. And we came to Canada, uh, spent some time there, and then moved to the States. So um, kind of had a lot of different experiences, spent a time with a lot of different cultures. Um, so it definitely, definitely helped shape and uh, helped me become who I am today. Um, uh, I come from a background that's completely different than real estate and investing. I went their traditional pathway. I uh, did my undergrad, then went to medical school, and now I'm a full-time physician. Um, my interest in real estate and investing started at the tail end of my residency and going into fellowship. Um, I Initially, my mindset was, you know, just, just put in the hours, get in get your nine to five and life will be good. Um, But slowly I started to realize that that is not a great setup to leave something for my, my family. Um, And uh, I got married at the end of residency and we had our first kid at when I started fellowship and, and that was really the stimulus to help uh, push me towards looking at outside sources of, of generating income and generating wealth and, and, you know, really being able to have the opportunity to spend time with my family and not be locked into to being worried about, you know, where the bills are coming from. Um, so, you know, when I was in training, I had no money. Um, I had no uh, time to really start it buying and getting into investing. But what I did have and what I uh, one of my strengths is I, I love to learn. So I spent uh, all of my free time listening to podcasts, reading books, uh, figuring out where my interests lie. And then eventually I ended up on uh, hospitality and short-term rentals. Um, and we can kind of happy to answer how I got into that space as well. Yeah, I love it. And it's interesting, you know, you know, we, we've got a lot of physicians in our group and, you know, where you've got, you know, you put a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, you know, like you said, you, you, lots of time without any money. And, and then all of a sudden we start making the money, but it's, you know, we're trading our time for money, even though you're trading time for, you know, it, relatively speaking, um, you know, a decent amount of money for the time we're putting in. It's still trading time for money. And you, it sounds like you realized early on that you wanted to use some of that active income to start to build the back end on the passive side, which is, you know, especially right out of residency. I mean, that's a lot of a lot of high income earners, physicians being one of them that are kind of W2 high income earners. They don't realize that until a little bit further down the line. So it's really great that you kind of noticed that. Did you have any mentors or anybody or you just kind of started looking at, at that? And, and, and putting the, you know, the pieces of that puzzle together on your own? Uh, you know, I think uh, I, it's pretty crazy. If you asked me three, four years ago, if I can predict my pathway into real estate, I, I would have totally messed up and had no idea. But it started off by just watching a Graham Stephan YouTube video, um, who's a, right. you know, real estate investor. And then from there, it yeah. went into bigger pockets. And then, you know, um, and then slowly podcasts. And I think your podcast, one of the first ones I started listening to. And and yeah, that really helped me hone in into which specific asset class and, and you know, where my interests best lie. You know, I think 
yeah. the, the world of real estate investing is so large and you have so many different things you can yes. get into, but like anything else, if you have no interest in what you're doing, I think inevitably you're going to fail or burn out. Um, so I went with what I thought was most interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And, and that's what, um, you know, I, I say all the time, like one, I love real estate in general. You'll never hear me talk bad about another asset class. They all have pros and cons. Um, I think the single family investing where, um, is, is the, the easiest and most likely path for most Americans, the average everyday income earners to go build wealth. And that leaves us into like long-term rentals and then possibly short-term rentals. And then you just mentioned, you know, if you have no interest in what you're doing, most of the time you're going to throw in, you know, hold up that white flag and say, I'm done with it because inevitably there's going to be tough times and there's going to be a grind, especially in the beginning. Um, the, especially those, that, those first few years of just really trying to get everything going. And a lot of times, if you have no interest in it, you're going to give up on it. And that's one of the big things that I ask people is, you know, tell me your property goals, but also, you know, how interested are you in these asset classes that you're getting into? Because there's people who love multifamily. There's people who love long-term rentals. There's people who love commercial spaces and they get really interested in it. And then there's people like us who really like the hospitality space. And so it, it, it's interesting that a lot of times people, you know, give me a little bit of a, a grief on that, uh, that advice in the very beginning is to say, try to lean toward what you're, what resonates with you the most, because every asset class has those pros and cons, including short-term rentals, but you need to be able to resonate with it. And it's got to fit some things into your ultimate lifestyle. And that interest level is the first part that is, is probably an indicator of how long you're going to stick with it. And, and it sounds like yeah. you agree with that. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Because I, uh, oh, sorry. Good. Nope. I, yeah. I was just going to say that, you know, that, that was just kind of leading me to that next question of, so you kind of decided that the hospitality space was one that you were interested in. And then, you know, you're, you're saying, okay, I'm listening to the podcast. You're listening to our podcast. I'm sure other podcasts and exposed to a lot of different things. At what point did you say, okay, I feel, I feel like I've got to like, you know, dial it down and really start to run down this road rather than just kind of consume information and educate myself. And, you know, because I think that that's a, that's a hard crossover for a lot of people. It's like, you, we can sit there and, get educated and educated and educated and we never take action. And at some point we got to take action because is there, you know, there one, there's never a perfect time to do it. There's never perfect properties, there's never perfect markets. And so at some point you have to say, okay, now I'm going to take that next step forward for you. Is there anything that was like this, uh, a moment that you remember saying, okay, now's the time for me to go. Yeah. That uh, honestly, this whole journey, that, that one step that you just mentioned was the most difficult step. Um, it's very easy, especially for people from my world uh, that are kind of, you know, intellectual, love reading books, love, love get, gathering information yeah. is to pull into that, that next step. And, um, you know, I think there comes a point where you are comfortable enough or you feel comfortable enough to say that I uh, have done my research and I have the right mentors to be able to guide me through the process um, and you have to pull the trigger. Um, my only rule kind of starting this journey was that I did not want to put my family under any financial hardship. Um, so I, you know, I, I went into this with the understanding that if I fail this, I should still be okay. Um, and that, that made me, that gave me some comfort to say, okay, like at least I was able to say that I tried it. Um, if it doesn't work out, that's one thing, but you know, if it does, then that could really change the trajectory of, of my life and my family's life. Yeah, I love that. And, I, and I, I say that all the time. There's nothing worse than seeing somebody put their back up against the wall. You know, you hear the, the adage of, you know, burn the boats and, and there's nowhere to go but forward and you can't go backwards. And, and I don't think that that's yeah. necessarily the case when you're going into any sort of investment like this. I, I think that it is yeah. really smart to be conservative and say, hey, listen, I don't want to put myself in a situation that if this doesn't work out that, you know, that, that I'm going to be in a whole different situation financially. And, and sometimes that means taking smaller swings than we might want to with our long-term goals, right? I I'm a big believer and we look for those base hits and those base hits instead of swinging for the home run. And that's, it's kind of along that same concept in that line of why I say that is because by going for those base hits, ultimately they turn into home runs. But if you miss a base hit, we're, we can still get up to bat again, right? And we're like, okay, uh, but if I'm if I'm always swinging for the fences, always swinging for a home run, once in a while we hit one, but a lot of times we strike out and and we put ourselves in a position that we don't want to be in. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, you're if you're always chasing the the big bucks, and you know you put all your eggs in one basket, and and that falls through. It's going to take you a long time to get back, a long time. 
So I yeah. think especially in, a, in someone that starts out with very little experience, uh, starting smaller might be a be better option. Yeah, I mean, and I love that you brought that up to say, hey, the one of the hardest steps for me was, you know, moving moving past the the education time frame of of collecting information, doing my due diligence, getting educated, which is all super important, right? We, we it, it, like it, that's the hard part is that there's there has to be enough of that that we make sure that we understand the, the path forward, that, we, that we're not just gonna, you know, we're, we're not walking into this with our eyes, you know, blind, we're, we're, we're not flying blind here, we're walking into it with our eyes wide open, but it is a major step to move forward. And so you said, okay, yeah. I had enough information, I had one rule, I wasn't gonna put my family in a, in a hardship if this didn't work out, and I felt like I had the path forward that I could start to follow. And so, and, and then that's when the action steps start to take. So without any experience in it, and we start moving forward, talk, walk me through a little bit what that looked like. Uh, yep. Uh, I think the first thing um, uh, before I started was I joined the mentorship group um, and I went through the course and um, kind of understood the steps that you have to take before you even start looking at a property, you know, having your financing yeah. lined up, understanding the regulations of the area that you're interested in, um, you know, and, and the, the legal ramifications, you know, of, of the steps that you're about to take. So once, once I had that framework laid out, then I went down looking at properties or the areas that I was interested in. Um, and I think, yeah. I think for most people, including myself, I felt most comfortable investing in the area that I was already in. And thankfully it was an area that was vacation rental friendly. Um, so, you know, we we found an agent. We started. We started kind of narrowing down our, our buy box, and um, yeah, and then landed on one and, and took the step. Awesome. And so I'm curious on when you say, okay, my my next step was join the mentorship program, and we started following that framework and that blueprint. How different was the blueprint that you started following versus? the education that you had had previously, like, you know, cause I, I always say there's a lot of stuff online, everything we do inside of our mentorship necess isn't necessarily rocket science or something mm -hmm. brand new. We try to, we, what we try to do is filter out the things you don't need to do and, and put it into a, a roadmap or a path that you can follow the, the, the absolutely necessary steps as far as we see it, right? And I'm curious when you jumped into that and you had already done a, a number of, you know, a, a number of hours and, you know, multiple hours of due diligence and educating yourself and reading books, listening to podcasts, getting on bigger pockets and groups like that. Then you jumped into a very specific mentorship program like ours. And when you started running down that road, how different was it? Like, it, was it surprising that there were things in there that you didn't know or that you were like, oh man, this is, this is a little different. Like if I, if I tried to do this with, with everything else that was out there on the internet versus getting into a very specific roadmap. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, like you said, here's the thing. I mean, if you, you can get all the information for free, um, yeah. kind of, um, so you can do hundreds of hours of research and get 95% of what you need, or you can just go ahead and buy the property and figure out the steps. Um, the question is how, how much do you want to accelerate your growth um, and shorten that gap to gaining the knowledge to take the next step? Um, and how much are you willing to put on the table for employing the wrong information and then getting dealing with the ramifications afterwards? So I think the, the, the mentorship group really, for me, I, you know, I think of it the same way as medical training. You know, you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to medical school and you have a, you know, expected return on investment. It's the same thing. You put, um, you know, you put your uh, uh, money into a mentorship group and it just really helps condense all that information and allows you to yeah. just quickly go through the steps that you need to, to start taking action. Um, honestly, that's the biggest thing is that it helps you start take action. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and yeah, and then, you know, the nuances are things that you may not be able to get just uh, online or on Facebook groups because um, there's just so much, so much detail that goes into just buying one single sh family short-term rental. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and, and you said that really, really well. And I appreciate you going through that because that's, that's exactly what I say all the time is listen, anything we do inside of the trainings and the mentorship, you can find it online. I'll tell you everything for free, right? Everything's there for free. It's, it's being able to 
It's being able to organize it in a step-by-step -step process and understand, okay, you do this and then you do this and then you do this. Even though all those things are out there, a lot of times they're not compiled in the right order or when you have to do it or when you have to think about it. And like you said, our, the goal is to accelerate time. Really what you're trying to buy with any sort of mentorship, any good mentorship program is time, right? You're trying to, you're trying to buy your time so you don't have to go figure that all out on your own and you don't have to put your own money up at risk and say, I have, I'm okay making a mistake, iterating, making another mistake, iterating. And at the end of the day, you figure out the path forward, but you had to, you had to iterate a lot along the way. Well, that iteration's already done for you inside of a good path. So it, it's great to talk about that and, and think about that because I think that a lot of people are in like listening to the podcast or in that stage of saying, okay, what is my next step? You know, do I keep listening to podcasts? Do I keep listening to reading books? Or, you know, how, how do I want to take that next step forward? And, and a lot of people are in that in that mode right now. So let's now fast forward to, okay, we decided our market, we started on and ultimately, you guys bought in Delray Beach, Florida, right? So let's, yeah. let's talk now about the property and how you selected it, what you guys like the things that you considered. And then let's, let's, you know, we always say we're in the experience business. So I'd love to talk about the experience you guys created because I think it's an amazing. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from, from the outside, looking in at that property, a lot of people would drive by and be like, there's no way in hell we're going to use this as a short term rental. Um, and I'll kind of walk through why we decided to pull the trigger on that one. So it's, um, it's in Delray beach. It's, uh, in a, it's in a decent area, nothing super luxury. It's um, three bedroom, one bath that was five minutes from the beach and five minutes from downtown Delray, which is a very, very hopping area and popular area from people from all over the country that come visit. Um, the reason we bought that property was because of the lot. Um, I think very quickly um, into this journey, I realized that if we were going to do well in this space, experience is everything. Um, and a market like Florida, I don't think people really care about the house itself. They care about what the experience that you can provide with amenities and specifically outdoor amenities. Um, and so the lot, you know, we have, it was a 10,000 square foot lot, completely blank slate. And I was like, yep, it's the one. Um, so that, that was the kind of uh, major reason why we decided to buy that property, knowing that, you know, we still may have some struggles given that it was only a one bath. Yeah. And so, so you saw like one, like you were able to identify where the opportunities lied in the, in the market. Right. And, and yeah. you said something that I think is really profound and really important for people to hear is most people would have drove by or looked at that property and thought, there's no way this is going to be you know, a, a short term rental. This doesn't make it like it, I need to look for something different. Right. I always say some of the best opportunities are those diamonds in the rough, right? You're when everybody else is ignoring them and you recognize what you're going to do with it and bring, you know, how you're going to bring that experience to life and you see the vision and you're saying, Hey, listen, I needed some space outside. And, and when I saw that I had the space outside and my proximity is decent, it's not right on the beach. It's not right downtown, but it's a good proximity to both of those profit drivers. You were also going to be able to create an experience at the property itself because you had the space, right? And then, and most people would have ignored that. And so, but you had the vision of what you really wanted to do and understanding the market, understanding what people are coming to do and saying, okay, now we have something we can work with. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is like the barrier to entry is slightly lower if you're just five minutes away from the beach. Um, and you know, it really still provides guests the opportunity to be close to all the action. Um, and, and, you know, this, this property was sitting on the market for a bit. And, you know, if you, you know, just throw the address into the rentalizer as it was, you know, you'd expect 40,000 of annual income and you'd be like, okay, there's, you know, it's an $800,000 property. What, what am I doing buying this place? Um, but, you know, looking at, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work at all, but looking at the comps and what we could do with, you know, the, the budget that we had, we, we were pretty confident that, this would do well. Yeah. So walk us through that. Walk walk me through those yep. decisions and understanding, seeing that opportunity and making those decisions to move forward. Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, there are certain core uh, measures that when we were running all the comps that, you know, your property has to have, right? You have to have a pool. Um, you have to have outdoor seating, outdoor games, um, and be close enough to uh, the popular tourist areas. But despite that, I mean, 
that's not enough. Um, so, you know, I think the space is totally changing. It's not, it's no longer just a, a rental game. It's an experience game. Um, and I'm so thankful that that insight came to me early on before we even bought that property. So I, I really spent time thinking about how can we build something that provides, uh, um, I, I, and I don't know which uh, person said this, coined this term, but an end of one property, meaning there's nothing like this or there's no other experience in the yeah. area that, that you can get. Um, and so we really thought about, okay, we're going to have a pool. We're going to have a hot tub, you know, we're going to have outdoor seating, but then, um, I, you know, love kind of Bali architecture and things like that. So I, I figured let's take on the Bali theme. And, and, um, we were grateful enough to be connected with, uh, uh, individual who, uh, his name is Niall, give him a shout out. Um, he, uh, also shares that same idea of like wellness, Bali, and, and he was able to bring our vision to life. Yeah. And it's awesome. Like th your property, when you look at the listing, you have to double check the, where that, where it's located because it, you've done it so well on that, that outside and that, that Bali theme. Yeah. You, you feel like you are like, you're like, I don't know where this property is even located. Like, and so, like you said, you're, you start to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to create my own market. I'm going to operate in a market, of, you know, well, I'm going to be one of one, right? Because nobody else has anything like it. And that's one of the things that we love about being able to bring these properties to life like this. And you guys did an amazing job with it, super congruent and, and an amazing outdoor experience, which is what you're selling, right? That's, that's the, that's the experience you guys are selling. And you guys, we always say success leaves clues. These are really like you guys should go look and reverse engineer. And it, when we have these types of conversations, I always post the listings in the show notes. You guys should go look at this stuff because this is a 1% property. This is a bossy's operating in the top 1% of the market, which means he's one of the very top properties that it's really, really, you know, most of the money's made in the top 15 to 20% of the market. So when you're on the top 1%, you're the best of the best. Right. And so, and there's, and this is a, is, is a property that on the surface, when he bought it had no business being in the top 1%. Right. And so there are levers that can be pulled to elevate your and maximize these properties. And this is, this is a perfect example of that. And elevating that experience had nothing to do necessarily with, I mean, your proximity was good, but a lot of people will be like, well, the property sold itself because it's right on the beach, right? Or it's right on the lake or it's on the ski hill or wherever it is. This property, you brought this property to life and maximize this property from the ground up. And it was because of that experience you guys put together. And, and yeah, and, and it, and it's awesome to be able to team up with somebody that has an, you know, a similar vision, but knows how to bring that vision to life, which it, they did a yeah. beautiful job with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So how long was the project? So something like this, you know, you're going to buy the property, you're going to, you're, you're budgeting in certain time um, on construction to get things the way that you want it. And then you, we've got to launch it. How did, how did budgets and timeframes last on when you were doing, you know, the, putting the property together? Uh, yeah. So we closed uh, February of 23 um, and we actually just launched it. We did some, you know, we furnished the interior, did nothing to the backyard and just launched it just to, um, you know, one of our strategies was to, uh, use bonus depreciation and, and offset our W2 yep. income. So we wanted to, you know, put it into service. So we put it in service for a couple yep. of months. Um, and then in, um, and that was like the tail end of peak season for the area. Um, and then yep. come August, uh, we shut it down. We were going through permitting for pool and all these things. So in August, when everything was approved, we shut the property down from August to, uh, early December was all renovation. And in that time we did the, the pool, the tiki hut, putting green, you know, the turf everywhere, fencing, like all that stuff got done within that time frame. Um, and then nice. December 20th was when we relaunched and, um, yeah, holy crap. It really took off. It really took off. And I'm yeah, really that's it, like it right by the, by the holidays season and so so you had so end of end of 2023 rolling into 2024 really just started to accelerate and, and take off like the that you were seeing yeah. an immediate return on that investment yeah yeah i mean we in one booking we made more than we made in three months launching it before the renovation which was, that's was awesome. totally blew my mind and that's when i finally you know you know, you always doubt yourself and you always have those demons telling you like, okay, you're not good enough or, you know, you're going to fail. But that was finally the, you know, the validation that we were looking for to say, okay, we have something here. Yeah. And, and it is hard, right? We have all that self-doubt. We have other people saying, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Or, you know, you're sure that this is going to work? Yeah. 
and we're worried we're, until until those first ones come in. You're like, oh man, this is uh, this is a little better than I expected. Which is, you know, we love hearing those stories as well. And and and, and one, you deserve it. Like, there's a lot of people that they they want the view, they don't like the climb, right? And th that are not willing to do the things that you did and take it offline from August to December and really bring this vision to life. And you know, and, and they'll just say, well. I just didn't have the right property. I just didn't have this or that. They just didn't provide the right experience. And you guys were able to go really curate an amazing customer experience and then bring it to life and then ultimately articulate it to where the marketplace is like, hey, we love this. And and, and it is you guys that are listening. You really should go check this out. I mean, with the tiki huts and the, the pool and the hot tub and the sauna and the putting green. I mean, this is this is an oasis that people probably aren't leaving a whole a lot. Like I would I would guess a lot of your guests are just hanging out and staying there. And it wasn't on this mega mansion. It wasn't this mega, you know, one or two acre, you know, sprawling resort type of a property that you had all this room. I mean, you're, you got a nice solid lot, 10,000 square foot lot in a good area and a good property, but not, it, it wasn't, like I said, this mega mansion that commanded this, you know, the, the, the experience that you guys created was really truly created from the ground up. Yeah, one of my uh, one of my favorite reviews to this date is we came for the beach and stayed for the backyard. And I was like, that's, yeah, that's awesome. That's I love that. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I totally like I totally get it. I understand it because I I always look at your guys' property. I think it looks like it's such a fun place to just go hang out with the family. And so, what are the plans? Like, so so we got that property, we got that one going, um, and then you got the validation of this works. Uh, this is this is good. And so my guess is that there now that now that that's there, what are plans moving forward? Yeah. Um, so a couple of things. We uh, a couple months ago closed on our second property in Pinellas County, uh, a couple hours just north of us, um, and right. we're getting ready to launch that hopefully by next month. Um, so super excited yeah. about that one. And then the other thing I wanted to share is um, we didn't buy the Delray property for cash flow. I mean, the goal was to you know at least have some cash flow so we're not losing money. But I think this is yeah. where the beauty of real estate comes in because this was a um, multifaceted project. So we wanted to buy in an appreciating area where we could operate as a short-term rental to use bonus appreciation to offset by W2 income. And we want to do a value add so that we can force appreciation and, and um, by the end of 2025, be able to do a cash out refi or 1031 into a bigger property. Um, so yeah. um, hopefully, fingers crossed, starting next year, we want to shut down the property again and add another bedroom and uh, a couple bathrooms and and then, um, right. yeah, raise the gross revenue and, and raise the value of the property. And again, like, and, and this is, I love that you brought that point up because so many new investors specifically, they chase cash flow. And that's like the number one thing that they come in chasing. It's like, I need a X amount cash on cash return, a certain percentage cash on cash return. That's what they're chasing. And I say, there's real estate is a multifaceted investment when it comes to you, you you've got to look at the entire internal rate of return, which means you, how much, how much are you saving on taxes? How much is the property appreciating? Is there value add that when you put something in, you're going to get a return on that investment? And we're, like you said, forcing appreciation. Then there's the cash flow, but usually over a five, 10 year period, that cash flow is insignificant to all those other things that we just mentioned when it comes to your wealth building journey. And it, and it's really being strategic about it and smart about it from the very beginning, like you're doing and like you're saying, because like you, you know exactly what the plan is for 2025. And then again, we're going to add a bathroom and a bedroom. Well, guess what? That does two property values. It makes them go up, right? You're, again, you're, you're looking for more value add, more forced appreciation. And that time horizon, all of a sudden starts to, you know, that, that when we look at a five or 10 year period on a property like that, that investment, that return on investment becomes significantly larger than the cash flow that you're, you're making. And that, that's why I say a lot of times, you know, it's funny when I, I speak on stages a lot and I go around and I ask people, if I could show you exactly how to buy a property, you didn't make any cash flow on it, but somebody else paid for it. You could use it along the way and it's appreciating over time and getting paid down over time by somebody else. Would you buy it? Everybody in the room raises their hands. Like, yeah, that's a no brainer. But in real life, 
when we show people properties that are that that's the case, a lot of people pass on it, right? And yeah. because and I think the reason is they don't have a long term vision and plan of what these properties can do strategically for them because they are multifaceted and they don't quite understand all of those different levers that can be pulled to build their wealth long term. Yeah, I, I think that point you just made cannot be understated is that if you start this journey, um, you have to have an end goal in mind now why the, the why question i think is extremely hard to answer but if you can lock that in it really lays the foundation of what steps you're going to take and helps you avoid some, yeah. some big mistakes i think for sure right it needs to be the guiding light your north star when you make decisions because it can help mm -hmm. you make better decisions because they're going to help you reach those ultimate property goals and the why behind you know the reasons and the why behind we're, uh, what we're doing and and what the you know, the end goal really looks like, because there's a lot of properties, like I always tell people, all of our whys are a little bit different too. We don't all have the exact same why. And even yeah. though we follow the same blueprint and the same path, a lot of our portfolios don't look the same, right? They're, they, we make different decisions along the way. And the reason is, is because our whys are different. And so, and, and yeah, I, I love that we brought that point up as well. With your Pinellas County property that you just bought, mm. do you have similar plans? Is it is it a similar type of a of a strategic move where you're going to go kind of force appreciation? Bring you know, are you going to bring an experience from the ground up on that property? Or are you guys, you know, what what tell walk me through a little bit on the plans on that property? Uh, yeah, so this one um, bringing that same theme over from Delray, um, but uh, this is a, a less intensive project. It was, it's already a four or two with a pool that just needed some renovation and a decent sized backyard. Yeah. So um, uh, this will be purely a cash flow uh, property. Um, and the numbers made, made sense enough for us that, that we pulled the trigger on this one. Awesome. And hey, you haven't launched this one yet or, or you have? We're getting close. So, um, you know, Hurricane Helene and Milton, um, uh, really slowed things down. Thankfully, you know, so blessed that we didn't suffer any you know, major damage or anything to the property. Um, but, but yeah, uh, we were hoping to launch by early October, but it's going to be hopefully next month. Awesome. Awesome. I can't wait to see how that launch goes. And again, just bringing these properties to life, breathing the, the, you know, the experience into them, you know, telling the story, letting people come in. And now all of a sudden they have this experience that they wouldn't have had otherwise. I love we get to see them from kind of start to finish and see how the, the end result is and ultimately how it how it impacts, you know, the wealth building journey, which, um, you know, both of these properties are doing that. And like you said, it's a long term process. You're going to continue to stack those assets and look back 10 years from now and say, holy crap, look what we did. Right. And, and a lot of times it's, you know, I always tell people you're not going to retire on the first couple of properties. Right. That's not the goal. The goal is to start to buy quality assets that perform well and ultimately appreciate for you long-term, people are paying them off, they're having amazing times and, and you're really able to maximize these assets for yourself um, and your family and your wealth building journey. So Bossy, it's really exciting to see, it's really exciting to hear your story. I really appreciate you coming on and having these conversations with us. At the end of these episodes, I always ask the one final question of, if you could go back, give your younger self some advice, what would that advice be after going through some of the process and learn along the way? I think one, uh, one thing I always uh, try to tell myself is where you are is exactly where you need to be. And, you know, the journey that, that took you to this spot is what was meant to be for you. Um, but I always joke that when I was in medical school, I should have bought uh, a quadplex or a duplex and lived in one and rented out to the other med students. And by the time I finished my medical training, I would have had 10 properties under my belt. But um, but, you know, you, you live and learn. And, you know, at the end of the day, the, the best time to start doing something that you think you're interested in is now. And, and you know, just just take that action and, and keep pushing and, you know, good things will come. Love it. Love the love the advice. And I, and I I couldn't agree more. There's so many times where we think, man, I wish I was a little bit further ahead or I wish I would have done this back then. And, and we all do that. Like hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Right. It's natural to do that. But now is the time to to take the action because you might not have been ready to take the action. You might not have had the skill sets and the knowledge and everything you needed back then, right? And most of us didn't. You know, I, I couldn't agree more. Where we're at now is exactly where we should be. And, you know, sometimes we want to be a little bit further ahead, but we just weren't ready for it back then. And so now as you get ready, it it you know, only the only thing that's holding you back is the action 
that you don't take. And so take that action yeah. and move forward on the things you're interested in and, and good things happen. And so I'm a big believer in that, you know, that there's nothing, nothing bad happens by taking action. Even if we mess up, we learn along the way and, and we iterate and we make the, and they make those different adjustments, right? Yep. hundred percent. So awesome. Vasi, I appreciate you joining us. This has been really fun for me. I love these conversations. I learn every time I talk to successful investors, as long as we've been doing this, I, every single one of these episodes, every one of these interviews and these types of conversations, I always learn from it. And there's always nuggets of information. Those of you that are listening again, success leaves clues, appreciate you joining us and go check out Bossy's property. Um, the, you know, cause you know, the, even though, even those of you that are listening on YouTube, we're not showing the, the property on here. You got to go to the show notes and click on it, but you'll be, uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. You're going to be just like looking through the pictures. Like I do. I love the outdoor experience. And so we know how valuable your guys' time is as well. As much as we appreciate Bossy joining us and having these conversations, we appreciate you guys for spending your time with us. We know how valuable it is. And you know, we, we're, our goal here is to help you walk into this game with your eyes wide open. If we've done that, the only way this show grows is if you guys share it. We don't run ads on this show. So if you share it with other people that might want to get in and have um, be part of these conversations in the short term rental game, we very, very much appreciate it. If you have more than 30 seconds, like it or review it on whatever platform you're watching or listening on. Those things really do help us on the rankings on the shows. And so we can keep continuing to get the message out on short term rentals. And the final most important thing that I ask you guys at the end of every episode is to pick that one thing you can do today to start building that life you don't want to take a vacation from. Cheers, my friends. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. Share this with other people you think need to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey, Grace, is there a website? Yes! For more amazing content and expert advice, visit bodicey.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.